Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Kim Barra Show. I am your host, Kim Barra, and on today's episode, that's right, audio only, we're wrapping off our NOC last three episodes. We've been touching on the niche, the offer, and today we're talking about copy, copywriting, all those fun things. Now, of course, if you need any help, lining up your niche offer and copy. Just head over to www.marketingmogul.com.au for any info you need and we'll be able to help you out there. There's a little bit of information about how we can help you a case study, a breakdown of the NOC method as well. But for today, guys, we are wrapping out about copy. So if you want to learn more about how to be an effective copywriter, this is for you. It's a big difference because a lot of people out there will say they know what copywriting is or say they do copy and they understand it when in reality they might write content or they might edit content. But the copy that I'm talking about here, the copywriting is direct response copywriting. That's where we are literally directly res- getting the market to directly respond, to take action and to effectively be able to move forward from reading what we write. And that's what, to me, copywriting is all about. A lot of people get confused by it. They go, oh, you know, like I'm, I'm writing copy. I'm not writing copy. I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. And I would like to try and make things just as simple as possible for people. So for me, copywriting is about this. I want you to imagine that you've got a grid, right? A grid. If you imagine like before and after, just a really simple tool I learned many years ago from a company called Digital Market. And it's just the easiest way I found to get people to think about how they're going to write their copy. Because ideally, you want to really dial into and really speak into people's pains, fears, frustrations, what keeps them up at night, what do they want. So if you imagine you've got before and after, so this is a couple of the questions that I pose to you to think about when it comes to writing copy. So the first is, what do people have? How do they feel? What's their average day like? And then what's their status, their social status in comparison to their friends, families, and loved ones? So if you think about those four questions, what they have, how do they feel, what's their average day like, and what's their social status, you will really start to understand the psyche of a person who wants to come and work with you. And that's what it's all about. Like if you can understand, and I forget who said this originally, so all credit to them where credit's due. But if you can understand your prospects' problems better than they can, you will always win. If you can step into the mind of your consumer, you can step and walk a mile in their shoes much better than they can themselves, that is where you win. But you need to make sure that not only do you do it before, so it's like, cool, before they come and work with you, like the middle line, if you're drawing this in columns, the middle line is insert your product, right? Before and after. So what is it their day like before they come and work with you and then after they work with you, what's it like? So if that's the outcome that they want to achieve. Right? And you would have gone through this and listened to, if you haven't listened to the Offer podcast, go back and listen to that one. But it's where we know like they want to get to the top of the mountain. They want to get outcome, right? And they want to achieve it without all the hardness along the way. So the after effect is really, how do they feel once your product and service is kicked in, whether it's helping their business, whether it's helping their personal life, whether it's helping their relationship, helping them with money, whatever it might be, one of those key factors is going to be. But then what's their life like after? Before you can paint the picture because that's where they are now, right? before is where they are now. So it's like, cool, what do they have going on in their life? They have a job, they have this, they have that. How do they feel? Well, they feel sometimes deflated and defeated. They feel they feel fat, they feel overwhelmed, they feel stressed, they feel whatever it might be, the negative that they're feeling at the moment. What's the average day like? They get up, they hit snooze, right? Or they get up, they go to work, they go home. It's like Groundhog Day. What's their social status like? They see other people getting ahead. Maybe it's investments. They see people investing in property I and mean, they wish that it could be them as well. After then how do they feel, right? You paint the other side of the picture because what happens if you do this and you literally write this out and at the start, all you're looking for is just dot points, just dot points, key outcomes, thinking about that. And then you can have to try and string it into a legible sentence. But if you put those dot points in play to start off with, it will be phenomenally easier for you than trying to just sit down and write copy. You get the before and the after, right? After they come to us, they have a loving partner, they have more money in the bank, they have whatever the after outcome is. They feel excited, exuberated, they wanna get out and you know win the seas of the day, carpe diem. Their social status now is they feel like a leader in the community, whatever it might be for them, right? You have those two ends of the spectrum. So if that's the case, 
Then what happens is after you put all that together, you put all your dot points, you put all your time, energy, and effort into the research and understanding your prospects. That's key, right? You've got to understand them. Then you've got really what could be three variants of, of copy, if you will, right? Three variants of words that you can use to articulate to your prospective clients why you know them better than anyone else. So you've got the, say the negative, it's not negative, but like the current situation, like the before, like what's their life like now? I mean, ideally, if you're doing a good job for your clients and you help them, like, you know, it's probably, they're doing okay, but not best, right? So you've got the before, you've got the after. So there's two variants already, two different versions that you have. You can paint a picture of what life will be like, or you can paint a picture of what life is like currently, or you can then combine it into two. Like you can combine the two together and you have, the before, insert me, the after. So you might be like, oh, before people come to work with your social voice, you know, they're not sure where their next lead's coming from. Their business is a little bit sporadic. They have ups and down peaks and troughs of leads and lead flow coming into their business. You know, their average day is they get up, they try and network, they go to a networking breakfast and networking lunch and networking dinner and they get stressed and overwhelmed. And they see other business owners who seem to just have it all figured out and they feel like maybe I shouldn't have got into business. After they work with your social voice, well, they have an abundance of leads. They have a predictable system that actually generates them an outcome that no one else seems to be able to figure out before. But now they've got that in place. They feel excited about their work and their life and their job again. They feel like they can go out there and conquer the world. You know, their average day is getting up to an inbox full, a calendar full, to you know, money in the bank, to happy customers and clients. And they feel like they're a business leader rather than a business follower, as an example. Right, So that's just off the riff off the top of my head of what you could do and how you would showcase the difference between the two. Right, So it can be really effective if you do position it like that, if you do position it and structure it like that. But that just gives you the basic fundamental understanding of putting that copy together. Right, You have that, you can understand their fears, their frustrations, their wants, their desires, that old chestnut. Then if you put all three of those together, the N, O, and the C, you've got the right niche, the right offer, the right copy, you don't have to be a Gary Halbert, David Ogilvy, genius copywriter because you are speaking to a market that wants what you have and you're saying it in a way that entices them to take action. That's all you need. Simples, right? Just keep it nice and simple. So people would like to overcomplicate copywriting and things like that, especially for Facebook ads I'm referencing here, especially being that's what we do. But you know, if you're writing a full sales letter, yes, you've got to go a bit different. If you're writing a, you know, a long 45 minute webinar or whatever it might be, yes, there's many different things you need to have in place. But if you're just looking to get ads out there to attract the right client, to get leads, to make some sales, right? That's what, just do that. Just do that and you will be off to the races and you will be killing it. Now, I think I know someone who needs to listen to this podcast is to understand what copywriting is about. Please do share this episode with them. You know, tell them to get on board with the Kim Barrett Show tell them not to hesitate. Just make sure you've subscribed because that's how we measure ourselves and make sure that we're doing the good job for you guys is by how many people are subscribed and tune in and download our episodes every week. We want to make sure we can keep crushing amazing content and bringing on amazing guests for you guys. And as always, you know, leave us a cheeky review. Let us know what you think of the audio only episodes. If you want to tell everyone that they're your absolute favorite because you get more Kim, uh, well, fuck, oh, be my guest, be my guest. But guys, until next time, you guys have all been awesome and I will say adios and I'll see you next time.